So number one, your view about Israel is wrong. Okay. This is why you're fighting a, a battle that's not worth fighting because you have a wrong view of Israel. They're not God's chosen people. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, a female Muslim regrets joining Islam. Let's dive right into hear her story. I started getting very obsessive with the rituals. I just started taking five showers a day. I lived in a constant state of paranoia. I did everything out of fear. My husband always said, you're going to come back to Islam one day. But of course, I pray for the opposite to happen. And when I started reading about Muhammad and some of the horrible things he had done. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that's when I was like, I was so scared, but I knew it was wrong. Knowledge is power. I know that's just a saying, but when I started delving into the Hadith and learning more, it, it was so much more than the base information I had been given initially. Mm. A lot of the information I was given initially made it seem just wonderful. Like Ahmed was this wonderful person. She better believe it. And I did, had never even thought to dig deeper to see if that was actually true everything you know i was told i believed neil armstrong heard the Adana. Oh, yeah. people don't know what you're talking about because it's been a quite a while people were told by muslims that neil armstrong the man who landed on the moon supposedly said that he heard this language and it sounded like it was angels when he heard the adhan the call to prayer he goes that's what i heard on the moon i heard that i heard this voice was like angelic voices. And that's what I heard when I landed on the moon. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yeah, that was one of the lies, internet lies. So they fed her all this garbage and lies. She just told you, by the way, fact check me for her or someone. Go on Google, Neil Armstrong hears Islamic prayer on the moon. Uh, they'll tell you where he made the connection supposedly. And Neil Armstrong denounced that garbage. Did you hear what she just said? They will give you a sanitized version of Islam, make Muhammad look beautiful. But when you study the Muslim sources, you see how evil and filthy and wicked he was. Glory to Jesus Christ. But so go ahead, sister. Then what happened? And and I do have to say a lot of the, the Muslim people I know, my husband included, they just say they've never delved deeper. So when they are telling you this stuff, it's because they were like, at, at, And so they're just relaying and they've never tried to look into it. But the way I see it, where we go eternally is so important. I do not want to get it wrong. One so of, when you came to Christ mm -hmm. in 2004, your husband knew about your journey? Not at first. I had to pretend like I would get different book jacket covers and put it around the Bible. And he just thought I was became a very avid reader of random books. Then I finally got up the courage to tell him. What year did you tell him? I told him like three weeks later after I mm. came how long has it been that he's aware of your conversion? Well, he stayed with you. It's been 20 years because as a Muslim, he can marry a Christian. But the problem is he didn't marry you when you're a Christian, you're agnostic, you took shahada. So you are an apostate. Yes. You left Islam. So how does he deal with that? Like I said, there's been really, really tough time, tough time. big argument. First, he always said, hey, you're going to come back to Islam one day. You're just lost right now. And so he really thinks that. But of course, I pray for the opposite to happen. There's two main questions. It's about the Jewish people. So Baruch Hashem. I'm a big time pro supporter of Israel. Yeah. So you are pro-Zionist. There's a difference between not being anti-Jewish and being pro-Zionist. You said you're pro-Israel. That means you're pro-Zionist. Why? Well, because in the Bible, it's mapped that is their land and that that's where the who told you that? thing will take place. Yeah, but who told you that? Because you're going to a certain church that teaches you what's called dispensationalism, a dispensational view mm -hmm. of the scriptures. That's not necessarily what the New Testament teaches, nor is it the view of the church historically. That's more of a modern teaching. So that's... That's number one. So number two, were you taught they're still God's chosen people? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Bad theology. The New Testament says the nation of Israel is no longer God's people. The people of God is the church. I was about to discuss this. You being here today, mm -hmm. you being married to a Muslim, you are confirmation to me. And I pray I don't speak presumptuously. May the Holy Spirit save me from error. And I'm in line with the Spirit that you are actually... Mm, for me, confirmation that the Spirit wants me to address this because of bad theology. Because I was going to talk about Palestinians mm -hmm. and Israelis and try to be as honest as I can and want to offend people. So, number one, your view about Israel is wrong. Okay. This is why you're fighting a, a battle that's not worth fighting because you have a wrong view of Israel. They're not God's chosen people. But in Matthew 21, open up your Bible. Read this. Jesus is going to give a parable. Matthew 21, 33 to 44. Start reading 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He put a vineyard some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them. 
more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. Last of all, he sent his son to them. Mm -hmm. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, before you move on, you understand what the parable is about, right? The vineyard is what? Israel. And the tenants, the vine dressers are the rulers, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What did the owner, who's God the Father, do as their last chance to get right? He sent his son last of all, right? Right. All right. So then Jesus already says they're what response will be. They'll kill him. Yes. When they kill him, what is God going to do? Continue reading 44. Okay. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and from who? given to a people who will produce who? The, the kingdom of God will be taken away from who? From the Israelites. Yeah, so why would you say they're God's chosen people? Jesus just said, when you kill me and reject me, the kingdom will be taken away from you. So where did you get their God's chosen people? I think I got it from... The misreading of the Old Testament. Yeah, I know. Now, so you saw what he said. The kingdom will be taken away from you, right? Yes. All right. So that's number one. Now, number two, let me tell you who the true... Israelites are. I'm just going to give you scripture. I'm going to give you the Bible. If people get upset, they get upset. That's between them and God. I, I answer to the Lord, not to people who will try to demonize me and some anti-Semitic. Number one, I can't be anti-Semitic. I'm a Semite. Mm -hmm. I'm a son of Shem. I'm Assyrian. I am a descendant of Shem from his son Ashur. That's in Genesis. You can read it. Number two, I believe my God became a Jew, which Muslims hate that I say that. Jesus is a Jew, a son of David, and he's God Almighty in the flesh. And number three, I love and honor a Jewish woman as the greatest creature of God, the Blessed Mother, the Holy Mother, the Mother of my Lord, my God, Mary, she's Jewish, and I love her as the greatest of all creatures, and I love her more than my mother, and I love her more than my daughters. So there's no way in hell someone can accuse me of being anti-Jewish. That's a lie, because that's, that's only slandering me, because they can't refute me. So keep that in mind. So now let me show you who a true Jew is, according to the Jews that wrote the New Testament. Go to Matthew 8, read 10. To 13 Matthew 8 10 when Jesus heard this he was amazed and said to those following him, truly I tell you I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so wait the subjects of the kingdom at that time were the Jews right yes but Jesus said the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown in hell, whereas people from the east and the west, meaning non-Jews, those are not ethnically Jewish, they will eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you won't. Okay. And why do you say that? Because a centurion, a Roman soldier, commander of a hundred soldiers, a Roman soldier, a commander of a hundred soldiers, showed such faith in Jesus that he says, I have yet to see such faith in all of Israel. Do you hear what our Lord said? This Gentile, who is a commander of a hundred Roman soldiers, trained to kill he says he has more faith than anyone in israel and that's why people from the east and the west will sit with abraham isaac and jacob but you jews who are given the kingdom you'll be thrown in hell for rejecting jesus yes. okay now go to romans 2 26 to 29 i'm going to show you scripture so this you got to change your mindset this pro-zionism that's not biblical you're distorting scripture to be a pro-zionist they deceived you you're not pro-zionist you're not pro-Palestine. You're pro-Lord Jesus Christ and pro-Kingdom of Christ. And Christ's Kingdom doesn't favor any human government. Christ's Kingdom will conquer all human governments, including Zionism. Zionism is an abomination to God. Zionism is not based on the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Zionism is antithetical, anti-gospel, anti-Christian, just as much as a Muslim government. Now. Go to Romans 2, 26 to 29. Okay. <clears throat> so then, if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirement, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? You understand his point there before you because you got to understand what you read. What is he talking about? What is Paul saying here? Okay, so the the ones that are not circumcised are the Gentiles or the ones yes. that are Jewish. Okay. And he's saying to the Jews, you who boast being Jewish and you have the law. Mm -hmm. When you have a Gentile who keeps God's moral commands and ethics, though he's not circumcised, won't God consider him as if he had been circumcised? Yes. Now watch what he says to those Jews who are circumcised but break the law. Now read it. The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who, even though you have the 
written code, and circumcision are a lawbreaker. So who's better in the eyes of God? Ethnically Jew who breaks God's law or a Gentile who's not circumcised but honors God and keeps his ethical moral demands? Well, a, a Gentile who honors God because the under circumcision... But now it gets better though yeah. because now you're going to see who a true Jew is, 28-29. A person is so. not a Jew who is on, one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the Spirit, not by the written code. So you, just, you, ju you were just told what a true Jew is. A true Jew is what? Someone who follows the Lord's laws and ethics in their heart and truly, and not just by outward. In other words, yes, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, because we're called to follow the laws to obey Jesus Christ. So you're just told right now, a true Jew is one who is spiritual, circumcised spiritually, born of the Spirit, united to Christ. And now, I'm going to show you this is the teaching of the entire New Testament. And I'm going to show you what the New Testament says about those Jews who reject Jesus. They're said to be fake Jews. They're not really Jews. In fact, would you be shocked if I showed you Paul saying, the Jews who reject Jesus, they're actually Ishmaelites. They're the sons of Hagar, the descendants of Ishmael. They're not the descendants of Sarah. Would you be shocked if I showed you that? Yes. <laughs> you would be shocked, right? That's a huge thing. <laughs> I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it from Paul, but I want everyone to hear it. She's going to be shocked when I show her Paul saying the Jews who don't follow Jesus, but follow the law of Moses, they are actually the descendants of Hagar, the descendants of Ishmael. They're not the descendants of Sarah. Galatians 4 verses 21 to 31. It's right there. Tell me who you want to be under the law. Are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave and the other. By the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a divine promise. Mm -hmm. These things are being taken figure figuratively. The woman represents two covenants. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are, are to be slaves. This is Hagar. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem. Now, did you catch it? Jerusalem on earth is Hagar. Okay. Did you hear it? Yeah. Hagar stands for Mount Sinai and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem. Okay. So, here you are, pro-Zionist, pro-Israel. You are fighting for the Jews who are living in the land that Paul said is the land of bondage, the land that enslaves the descendants of Hagar, not of Sarah. Okay. I didn't say that. Paul just said that, right? Yeah. Okay, now, then, what is true Jerusalem? And who are the true sons and daughters of Sarah? Now, keep reading. Okay. But the Jerusalem that is above is free. And she is our mother, for it is mm. written, Be glad, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Doubt for joy and cry aloud, you who were never in labor. Because, because, more, are, are, oh, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband. Now you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, are children of promise. Who are the children of promise who belong to Isaac? Now, Christians. He, yeah, okay. But the Jews who reject Jesus, they are sons of Hagar. Keep reading. At that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the power of the Spirit. It is the same now. It is the same now. Notice, just like Ishmael was born of the flesh, not of God's promise, because God didn't promise that he would give Abraham a son from Hagar. That So Ishmael was simply their human decision to do so. But God did promise to give Abraham a son from Sarah, and just like in Genesis 21, Sarah told Abraham, get rid of the woman, the bondwoman, the bondwoman and her son, mm -hmm. because he has no share with Isaac. And God said, listen to what Sarah said. And so here Paul is saying, just like in Genesis 21, God had Hagar and her son banished from Isaac so that she was removed. Paul is saying, you too, you Christians, you are like Isaac. Get rid of the bondwoman and her son. And who are they? The Judaizers. Mm -hmm. Those Jews who are telling Christians who are not ethnically Jewish, you have to keep the law of Moses against circumcised. And he says, they are Ishmaelites. You have nothing to do with them. Get rid of them. Okay. Finish it, though, all the way to 31. Okay. <clears throat> but what does Scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance of with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. Wow. So I want to ask you a question. I'm a little baffled. Mm -hmm. Who are the sons of the slave woman, according to what Paul just said? Uh, those that are not children of God or will share in the inheritance or not Christians. Who are they in that context? Who are they? The uh, well, Jews. It, okay. He's talking about the Jews. That's why he mentioned Mount Sinai in Arabia, which corresponds to Jerusalem. Those Jews who still want to keep the Mosaic law, who still want to follow Moses, they are the sons of the bondwoman, have nothing to do with them. And what did he say about Jerusalem? Is Jerusalem, <clears throat> is that 
the true Jerusalem? And is that the Jerusalem that God delights in? Or is that the Jerusalem that is represented and typified in Hagar, the bondwoman, not the free? No, I think what you said, the one that's typified. Don't think what I said. He said it there in Galatians 4, 21 to 25, right? I didn't say so. Make sure you're understanding what you're reading. Right. So Jerusalem on earth, is that the true Jerusalem that lights God's heart? Or is that the Jerusalem that is typified in Hagar, Hagar, the bondwoman who gives birth to children in slavery who are not free? What is that Jerusalem on earth? Any tear from you? Because if you're silent, I can't read your heart here. Let me try to read your heart. What is the Jerusalem on earth? The Jerusalem on earth is just a mapped out piece of land over and next to Egypt. And who points to that Jerusalem? Sarah or? Is it saying that Hagar points to that Jerusalem? Then you didn't run read it with understanding. See, that's why I got to ask you questions. If you don't understand, you're not going to get the point. Reread Galatians 4, 21, 26 until you get it. Okay. Read it. You're not going to go anywhere to get it. If you don't get it, then you're not going to see it because the indoctrination of the church you went to is very heavy. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may he set you free from that indoctrination. Read Galatians 4, 21, 26. Reread it. I think what's stopping me from fully understanding is what? then why are they in conflict? If the Jewish people over there are not God's chosen people, why is there still such conflict then with What the does that got to do with anything? If the Bible says they're not God's chosen people, what the hell does a conflict got to do with proving otherwise? It's what just, does that got to do with anything? Okay. Okay. I'm going to read it again. Here you read it. Galatians 4, 21 to 26. Okay. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born according to the flesh, but his son by the free woman was born as a result of a divine promise. So I'm just stopping so I understand. Everyone who was promised? Oh, yeah, who was promised? Isaac was promised. Was Ishmael promised? No. Exactly. So now pay attention. Which Jerusalem corresponds to Ishmael and Hagar? And which one corresponds to Sarah and Isaac? Pay attention now. These things are being taken figuratively. The woman represents two covenants. Wait, the woman, meaning when, Sarah and Hagar, represent yeah. two covenants. A covenant made on Mount Sinai, which corresponds to Jerusalem on earth, and the other covenant that is heavenly. Keep reading. Okay. One covenant is from Mount Sinai and bears children who are to be slaves. This is Hagar. So this is the one of the flesh. Now, Hagar stands for Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present city of Jerusalem. Can okay. it be any clearer? You just read yeah. it a second time. Okay. So the Jerusalem on earth is who figuratively? It is figuratively Hagar, which is the, oh. the children that are, were born of the flesh, which was Ishmael. And so which children is Paul saying are Ishmaelites? What is he talking about? Because he said two covenants. The covenant on Mount Sinai, that was made with who? With Abraham. No, Abraham was not on Mount Sinai. The oh. covenant on Mount Sinai was made with who? With Moses. And Moses made that covenant with who? With God. So, so you know, in my streams, I hang myself with my shoestrings. So Moses made a covenant with God or God made a covenant with Moses with I who? No, with Moses. <laughs> and with who? Who did God make that covenant with? You mean like with the Israelites that were... Oh. You got it. I'll take myself my shoestrings. Okay, so one more time. The covenant on Sinai, mm -hmm. that covenant was made with who? With the Israelites. You just admit Israelites are the sons of Hagar. That's what you just said, if you understood what you just said. Because if the covenant of Mount Sinai, which is in Arabia, which corresponds to Jerusalem, that is symbolized in Hagar. That means all who belong to that covenant are the sons and daughters of Hagar. But that covenant was made with the Israelites. Hmm. This is a lot to you take. You better believe it. But you asked. I can't lie to you. I can't tickle your ears. Come on, Reuven. Don't ask that stupid question. Where do you want Jesus come down to? You want to come down to Honolulu, Hawaii? Anyway, for you, are you listening? If you believe your New Testament, Paul, who is a Jew, so he's not anti-Semitic, just told you the covenant made on Sinai which is Jerusalem on earth, that is now <clears throat> typified, represented, symbolized in Hagar. Because Hagar is the bondwoman who gave birth to a son who was in bondage. And these Jews, if they're trying to now merit righteousness before God by keeping the Mosaic law, they will be in bondage to sin and they will come under God's wrath. So understand the point. Earthly Jerusalem, after rejecting Jesus, is no longer the Jerusalem of God. Then what is the Jerusalem of God? Well, read. Continue. Okay. What is the Jerusalem that delights God, that pleases God, which Sarah represents? Okay. Keep reading. But the Jerusalem that above is free. 
and she is our mother for oh, what's your mother the the free jerusalem and where's that at i don't think it's an actual place no it is it's heavenly jerusalem okay where you got to know your bible it's hebrews 12 22 to 24 and revelation 21 says and i saw jerusalem coming down out of heaven like a bride adorned for her husband okay that's so why you got to know your bible so which jerusalem is the jerusalem that delights the heart of god the heavenly jerusalem in hebrews and revelation and go to hebrews 12 22 to 24 to show you that the real jerusalem is the one in heaven and it's coming down at the end of the age when the lord returns hebrews 12 uh, 22 to 24 so you don't think i'm making it up hebrews 12 22 to 24 okay but you have come to mount zion to the city of the living god the heavenly jerusalem the what the heavenly jerusalem so there's a zion in heaven i guess so don't guess come on sister don't I, guess according to this yes so there's a zion in heaven and that's the city of the living god yes heavenly jerusalem Yes. Reuben, don't be that contentious because Romans 11 buries you, dude. I don't know if you're asking sincerely or you're asking because you want to argue because Romans 11 proved my point. If you're not a one verse Char Charlie Reuben, did you read Romans 11, 11 all the way to 29? That says that now the Gentiles are the branches that have been grafted in and Israel has been cut off. Or does your Bible begin and end in verse 25? That was the passage you're going to use to bury people like you for distorting scripture. All right. Anyway, keep reading. He was 12, 22 to 24 because we got trolls commenting in the comment section. Okay. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Hmm. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So in heavenly Jerusalem, that's the city of God? Yes. And in that city of God, you have Zion and Jerusalem? Yes. And who lives there? God the Father. Who lives there? Jesus Christ. Who lives there? Myriads of angels. Who lives there? The spirits of those who died in Christ are now perfected because their bodies are in the dust. Their spirits are there. And what are they having there? They're having church because there's church there, right? Right. So which is the true Jerusalem that God delights in? The heavenly Jerusalem. Exactly. Because remember what Jesus said? When the Jews rejected him, the kingdom would, take, would be taken away from them and the city and the temple would be destroyed as a sign that God was done with them. I'm going to show you that, but I want you to go slow with me. So you caught it, right? Right. right now go to revelation 21 to see it is the heavenly jerusalem that is the real jerusalem and sarah symbolizes the heavenly jerusalem and we who belong to christ belong to heavenly jerusalem those who reject christ belong to earthly jerusalem which hagar represents so now go to revelation 21 verse 1 and 2 Okay. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And when that heavenly Jerusalem comes down, guess who's coming down with it? Now read three and four. Okay. We can open up the entire chapter again. I should have just had you open the entire chapter. Sorry, my fault. Okay. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling is now among the people and he will dwell oh wait did you catch it when yeah. does god dwell with mankind when heavenly jerusalem comes down because that's the city of god where god dwells in right yes so when that jerusalem comes down that means god is coming down to dwell with us in the new heaven new earth so look god's dwelling places with men now keep reading all the way to four they will be his people and god himself will be with them and be their god Mm. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Mm. Okay, now I'm going to show you now who the true Jews, the true Israel, the true people of God happen to be slowly. But you're following this pattern. In the video, the woman shares her journey and the factors that led to her feelings of regret. It's crucial to recognize that what individual experiences with faith can vary widely. She shared her experiences of the things she had and read in the Quran and the hadith about Prophet Muhammad. She found out that the Prophet did so much wrong and she became scared because no one told her about it from the beginning. Her husband is a Muslim and he is persuading her to convert back to Islam after she left the house for him. Why would someone convert into a religion after she find out the truth about it? Then she asked Sam Shamon if the Israelites are the chosen people. Sam Shamon known for his strong opinions and debates on religious topics, brings his perspective into the discussion. This creates a dynamic dialogue, but also raises questions about the tone and framing of such conversations. Where he starts by reading the parable of Jesus when he said that the king sent one of his servants to the vineyard and the master of the vineyard killed him and the king sent his only son and the master of the vineyard said to the people, 
that this is the son of the king let kill him. From the parable you will find out that the vineyard Jesus spoke about are the Israelites and the master are the Hebrews and the teachers of the law. So if you read down the book of Matthew 21 you will now find out that the church is the chosen one not the Israelite. This proves that God prefers the Gentiles that honors him than the Jews that dishonors him. That is why it is important to make research about any religion most especially about Islam before you join them. Thank you for watching this video, let's know your views about this video in the comment section. See you in our next video.